Okay, just taking another look at the 1300 series, just to look at the, we're trying to look at cons consistent concepts, factors, strategies, um, methods used, um, pluses, minuses, etc. All of that type of stuff that make up like the 1300 area. And not every 1300 is the same. I'm not trying to pigeonhole them in any way in that sense. But there is a general kind of theme that you can actually build into your own knowledge and development um, as you're working your way, if you're working your way through the um, rating ladder or just want to experience a person of that level um, and how to maybe operate and work with them or against them or you know try and beat their systems so we're just this is um was it 10 minute games these are so it may be a while for us to get back in on this particular person because it's a uh, 10 minute games so we will just sit and wait in fact what we'll do is analyze this game i'm hoping that it pops up when they do start So they were playing as white, so let's go back to the beginning and let's have a look. Let's take that off and just uh, we can leave that there, can't we? Yep. Alright, so I'm hoping it flashes up when they start their next game. So they push through the centre here and they've gone for the Fianchetto line. So we we already have in our heads that the 1300s do like to take pieces off the board but they do have moments of grandeur where they potentially think right okay i'm actually going to play like um a grandmaster or something i'm going to do something um extraordinary that really isn't safe it isn't sound but i'm going to do it anyway and it leaves them in a bit of a bad position so they end up scram scrambling around type thing but some of them do 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 it well, but then the ending isn't quite as good as what they expected it to be. So they captured the knight, simple straightforward stuff, uh, developed the knight through, and the queen then takes the pawn on the far side. Knight develops itself, queen supporting the rook, so no issues there. So black is, win black is winning at the moment. So they put a check on the king. Again, 1300s, as we've seen in the examples we've seen so far, um, they delay the castling process. And I don't know if it's because they've seen too many grandmasters playing and you know the grandmasters aren't castling until way late in the game, if at all. So they believe in that they don't have to castle, they don't have to keep their king safe. It really is a little bit of a sticky wicket. Um, so you do lose a bit of tempo in that respect. So they brought the pawn down onto the knight, which is defending the knight, which is um, the queen is x-raying through to the king. So he's still not taking the opportunity to go and castle. They've put pressure onto their queen, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Then the knight's attacking the queen again, still not gone and castled. And now he can potentially free up his knight, which he's done. And it's a, it's attacking um, nothing really, but um, there must be method in the madness. I mean, it's looking here. Is it looking to come back around again? Um, could it not have just come here, being safe and allowing the king to castle? Anyway, just this first time I'm seeing this. Um, so then the knight goes and attacks their knight. The queen comes up and it's attacking a pawn that is highly defended. It's got an attack here with the knight and the queen, but that's really easily defended by the pawn pushing there. I can't see any other benefits to that. Um, maybe he's looking at doing a horizontal with the queen. But the bishop and the queen are protecting the, the knight here, so I'm not too sure what that move was. So the knight takes the knight, and the knight moves back, and the queen gets attacked. And it's come across on a horizontal, attacking the bishop here. So that's a moment of cleverness. But it's, to me, again, the king isn't even safe, and they're out there fighting the good fight. 
not as solid as it could be. So they take, but then I don't see. <laughs> so they've taken, but the queen is right here. So <laughs> they do take the queen off the board. Okay, so <laughs> so in essence, black shouldn't really lose this, should they? But I, I think they do. Okay, so <laughs> I'm so just chuckling away. Um, so that's that's showing like um, one of the key things that we saw in the previous um, 1300 games where um, pieces were left a little bit um, loose. And um, there were single attacks. The teams weren't working together. So that was a key thing that was brought out of looking at the last 1300 to 1400 little exercise that we did. Because we hit on what the expectation was of like the 1400 area as well. And we more or less nailed that from the example that we saw. So um there's truth in what we're saying. It's not a thing that's set in stone, but it's just, it's really to get a better understanding of what you can expect from these types of levels. Um, you are going to get those that are just flying through the rating ladder. So you may just bump into one of those and then, you know, you, you go, wow, how could, he's not that level, but maybe he's just on his way up and you've just caught him as he's on his way up. So you have to bear that in mind. And then there's the other side of the coin, obviously, with the nice specials, using assistive stuff and all that business. But we'll not talk about them. We want to talk about understanding what we can expect and what we have to learn for ourselves as to what we deem as the ability of the rating levels. Not just reading about it in a book or reading about it online, you know, oh, well, the 1600s are expected to do this, that, but do the other. Um, you have to experience it yourself and find out what it is that you feel is that level so that you know in your own games how to develop and push forward. Because if you don't know what is expected of a level, then really you don't really know how to get to where you want to get to. Because you haven't got a grounding, you haven't got a basis to actually work from. So they brought their knight down, and <laughs> this is getting more funny of the day. Um, so the pawn takes, but his queen is <laughs> it's in line with the bishop. So they're both basically... Um, <laughs> misplaced their pieces and this is the type of thing that you can expect from this type of um, game I mean look at this this is quite nice isn't it getting a fork on the two rooks I wonder if that was played out yes it was so again single attacks is not really working pieces together but the opponent's position on the board isn't good enough to actually defend against the single attacks so he grabs grabs and now he's got two rooks and he's um, got a rook and a bishop. It's still doable. He captures. And maybe they should have kept the rook on the board. Not too sure. It looks like it probably would have. So now he's just chasing them around now. So at this point then I think the opponent res resigned. So that's the way that went for that 1300 uh, game. I don't know if they've started yet because it's not piped up anything. So I will see where we are at. If I do back, will that come back? Nope. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, excuse me. So that's the where's it going?
Okay, I think I've had to go on to a different 1300, but I suppose that's like showing more range. That's fine. So let's see if we can get into this um, picture. So queen's come down attacking the knight. So the knight hasn't got any protection on it. So it's obviously done a single attack of sort. So it's come round, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. It's fairly smooth. Probably the knight's coming to attack. The pawn's coming to attack, but the queen needs to move. And maybe they forget that their queen is actually being under attack. So 1400. So again, this is a 1300 versus a 1400. And we saw what happened in the last episode of a 1300 versus 1400. It got very crazy. So as we can see, the 1300 hasn't yet castled again. How many times do we see this? So the knight now is attacking the queen. So he's not going to get a chance to go and castle. It's really amazing. That is one key thing that we are actually seeing throughout these 1300 matches. The lack of castling. Now he's paying the price. The knight is now attacking the king. So he's lost his castling rights. He has to move the king. If he moves it up. Now the 1400 is smells blood whether it's correct or not he's smelling blood so he knows that the king now is in the center of the board it's not castled so now he should be onto a winner but will he work his team together to actually get the finishing blows the bish the queen is covering this square so the knight can come again and put another check on the king but does he waste his time doing that just yet? Because he's not really building his team up. The pawn is attacking the knight. The knight potentially is moving somewhere. where It's got support here, but then it's going to be a weak support because this pawn will drop onto this knight, which is supporting this knight, and then the bishop will be able to take this knight. So is he looking to come here for a cheapie? But the knight is protecting here at the minute. He does go for the cheapy. It's just that that's no, it's no great shakes because it's getting chased all over the place now. So he's going to hide in the corner here potentially. It's actually taken, and I suppose in a way, but it's not good because if his queen takes, then what happens? The rook comes here, doesn't it? Aha! Very nice. But yeah, I suppose he's doubling the pawns. But the king is still in the centre of the board. So he's going to lose some tempo. Got all them arrows. Key thing. Centre of the board. So he's doing all this fighting. But his king isn't safe. The idea is checkmate. You know, squeezing the king. Wow. So why it's taken, so he's probably looking for some sort of, I will say a nugatory check, because at this moment in time he doesn't have any other pieces supporting his attempt at going for an attack on the king. So if he's coming there or if he's coming here to see if he can then take the knight off the board, at least, maybe the queen exchanges and then the king take, but the king is really in the centre of the board. But then it's just facing the rooks, I suppose, so he can maybe dance a little bit. Oh, I might not be seeing it right. Maybe I'm missing something, but I really don't know what that queen move was. I think the king's got to suffer now, hasn't it? Can he make it suffer, though, the 1400? Can he make it work? I, I don't know now. It looks like he's lost it. Uh, he's trying to draw the uh, king out, but he can't because the knight is protected by the bishop. I think he might do it then. He's making him pay the price for not castling. So the rook has moved, but then boom, there we go. 
Ooh, dear. Wow, all because there was no castling done. Strange situation that. Okay, so we've got the 1300 on watch. So we're going to watch a few more of their get well, one more of theirs, and then we'll see if there's any more 1300s, depending on the time scales of this. Um, so it looks like they're suffering from shock from the last game. So they're okay. And this is that type of opening again that I mentioned 1300s, maybe even 1400s, probably need to stay away from this type of opening. It's too advanced, it, it, too many variables. There's not much manageable um, scope as a big a beginner. I'm classing the 1300s as beginners. Um, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't allow enough a, attack and counter attack defense. Look what's happening at this moment in time as I'm speaking. It's um, <laughs> they're not even getting a look in in the game. Whereas if they just do the simple blocking the pawn off, it it. You get into the rhythm of the game and then it allows you to practice attacking, counter-attacking, defending, supporting your pieces. That opening is not for beginners. It's not for 1300s, 1400s as far as I'm concerned anyway. And that's just my opinion. And who am I? I just like enjoying the game. I've looked at my own answer process and I've worked out the simplifications of things just to try and improve my game so that I can enjoy it even more. So who are they facing? Oh, they're facing the 1400 again. So it's 1300 versus 1400. So we know what the 1400s are like. They're really good at attacking more single attacks, but they tend not to work their pieces together. And they do like the end game type thing. But sometimes they do struggle with that. The last one was okay. They, they eventually got the attack process because the 1300 hadn't castled. Have a look at this game again. They haven't castled again. Really bad practice, I think. And it's not just this 1300. It's quite a lot of the 1300s that I watch. And when I've said in my previous videos about I do a lot of research, I do a lot of looking at other people's games, this is now me showing you the types of stuff that I do so that I can develop my game. I'm looking at other people's games, assessing what is potentially wrong with the situation so that hopefully I can try and avoid doing that myself. And so the more I can school myself, see, see how they're attacking and the 1400 Nice single attacks, he's got his pieces in the centre, um, but it's not really working together. They like these combination attacks because it makes them feel like they're doing advanced chess. But sometimes the foundations aren't really that good. But he's playing against a player who's only just castled in this match. Only just castled. So he should be able to get away with his attacks if he starts developing his pieces properly you know so working them together rather than relying on one or two pieces to do the job one of the one of the many key things for the 1400s is they do like to try and end the game as quickly as possible yep they want to show their might and their power and their prowess but if you take them to the end proper end game they kind of do struggle the 1300s don't really know what an end game is in the general scheme of things. Um, if they are in the end game, there's a lot of floundering around, not really understanding really how to end the game per se. And it's not a slant on them. This is me practicing my knowledge and skills um, based on what they have shown me and taught me. I would say that I class them as them, my teachers because the more games I watch, the more I'm learning. And the more I'm picking up from their sort of traits. It is very rare that I do see those Supremo type games. But then the ones where you do see the Supremos. That's when I go, oh, that definitely is not the way that a 1300 would play. So I'm hoping you can see now why I, I can say that if I'm playing somebody of a certain level. And then suddenly the magic kicks in. Why? 
I know the magic's kicked in because I've watched loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of games of those types of levels. And when you see something kind of strange and odd, it kind of makes you stand up because it's not that often that it happens. That's the key thing to remember. Okay, so the rook has come here. Well, I don't understand what this rook move was from 1400. It looks like it's supporting this pawn so that it's allowing the bishop to um, move. But the pawn wasn't under any threat. And it slowed down his development. He's not attacking now. He's actually defending, which is a bit slow in their development. It's because his plus two is probably looking at his plus two and saying, right, I want to keep the tension. As I mentioned in the previous video with the 1400, 1300, um, or the previous, previous one, where I said, well, yes, they like to keep the tension to make it look good. But at the same token, then they'll come blasting out and attacking, but that attack won't have any support on it. So it'll be the potential value for the attack kind of flounders. But they do like to do this key tension thing because I think it makes them feel like they're playing like a, you know, an advanced level game. But when they do put it on, it does work properly. It's just that they take their time, which sometimes is a little bit too late. So he's protecting stuff for no reason whatsoever. So he's wasted two tempi there as far as I can see. Now the queen is coming here. Is he looking to move it or something just to bring it here? He's linked up his rooks in a sense. So it looks like this bishop is moving because he's looking to get the trade off. So he's doing the rope up type thing, just sitting back waiting, keeping the tension and it annoys themselves, you can tell. Now he's doubling up his rook, so this is where he's probably going to go here so that then he can actually get this rook off the board. What was I saying? Um, yes, they, they can annoy themselves sometimes, you can tell on the board. I mean, this queen move here, he knows he's coming doubling. But there's nothing clear. So he's now coming attacking the rook. The rook can still come here. It's like a single attack. Bishop's got this point bishop here, potentially taking, but he can't do that now because then the rook is going to take. Then he loses his rook, he loses the rook, and then it's back around checkmate. So he needs to be careful on that score. It looks tempting. I feel he's going to do it, you know. I feel he's going to do it, but he shouldn't do it because it's pretty obvious. But people do fall into that trap. Especially in the 1400 area, they like to take pieces off the board, but it looks like he's thinking now. How does he get that? If he'd have just taken a bit of time, just moved his rook, he could have doubled his own rooks up. But he went for an attack, a single attack on a piece that's already in a prominent position. Not saying he's losing, but he lost Tempe by moving this rook here, protecting this pawn. Bringing this bishop to here, defending the knight. So two tempi, two main tempi he lost. Keeping the tension, protecting pieces that didn't need protecting. Though he could have utilised his time, I believe, more in an attacking framework. So this is going to fall into line now. This He, he really wants to take this bishop. I can sense it in, in my bones. Don't wait all this time and take it because you're going to lose via back rank check bit. So 1300 done the right-ish thing because the 1400 has allowed them to do the basic moves which is trying to own this file with the rooks. And again, this is like... <laughs> it's not very dynamic in that sense. Do you know what I mean? It's not very dynamic. What does that mean? It's like, oh, let me do an advanced move. It's not an advanced move. It's not scaring black or anything. I mean, I can sense this coming here just to attack the bishop. I 
could even sense this bishop just taking here. It is a 1300, they like to take pieces off the board. If all of a sudden he starts getting arty, which they can fall into that trap, then it's, yes, there we go. That's, that, that'll work for me. I'm, I'm okay with that. Nice and simple. Nothing too arty. White has allowed them to do this because of those two tempi losses that I, I mentioned earlier. The rook going here and the bishop coming here. So let's see if it plays out. Simplicity is key for um, black at the moment. Now he's fashioning, trying to fashion something. Is he just going to take and he wants the queen to come? No, that's not going to work. Do, do, do. So he's attack. Oh dear. Yeah, he's just sitting back. He's doing rope a dope. He wants black to overextend, but I don't think he's losing out too badly as black if he just goes for simple. Knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. Whip this bishop off the board. He's got like a, the knight attacking this pawn here, so is he looking at play there? I don't think that still works for him. He can still touch here, but he wants his knight to jump in here, put a check on the king, so stay away from that. Just take this off the board. I suppose the knight will come back because he's not feeling he's not feeling it in that position. So when the knight comes back, the bishop could take, but the might treasure the bishop, so they'll go, well, I'm not going to take with the bishop. Because, you know, the bishops are the bishops. But just take... Yeah, come on, that's it. Knight takes. Take it with the bishop. Don't dance with the bishop. Take it with the bishop. He's not made the move yet, but he's going to take... Can't, can't see him taking with the pawn. That's That would seem like a bit of a waste. Unless, of course, he's definitely feeling that he's getting in here somehow. He's taken with the pawn. I, to me, I don't think that's the best, but we shall see. He's got one, two, three on there. He's got three protector. No, don't do that. So he's going to come here, put a check on the king. King comes up. Knight has to move back up here. Yep. So the knight's out of the picture, but he's still protecting the pawn here. And if he's playing like that, then he's just going to go and attack here. So then the knight has to go further back. Okay, that's a nice little picture going there. And then he's got like three pieces on this one pawn. And the bishop will be pinning through the knight to the king. And 1300 hasn't done anything special. 1400 has allowed this to happen. Not that pawn. No, anyway, I suppose it doesn't matter really. Does it? it's, a, it's a pawn attacking. He has to end up going here. Then the bishop blams him like that. But you know what? I bet he goes with the rook because the rook is actually on the queen. Then the rook takes. Then the rook takes again. Yeah, I bet he's going to go with the rook rather than the bishop. So this was a nice... A nice one to talk through. It's actually hidden. I suppose it don't make any difference, but I said, yeah, it does actually, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, because we still got the three there. Now, does he go with the rook or does he go with the bishop? Bishop got a check on his king. So that changes the goalpost a little bit. So that's a check. But I wish there was the rook was there. But it's still a check all the same. Then he could come here with the bishop attacking the knight. Rook takes, rook takes, or the queen takes. Yeah, queen takes to get this spot. Maybe attack the king. Yeah, that all looks pretty straightforward now. Nicely simplified by um, black. 1400's rope dope is... It's stifling their, their pieces. What else? He's plus two at the minute, though, is um, white because of that minor piece attack. It's taken with the rook. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Thing is, he's going to have a check on the king, isn't he? A discovered check on the king. So the queen has to move, but he has to move somewhere that the rook can't get to it. Because if he just moves back, then he's getting the queen off the board. 
he has to go deep, deep, deep undercover. Not even there because he can come across. So he has to go deep, deep, deep right down here. That's where he needs to be. Yeah, out of the way. So the rook can't get it. So that means he loses his knight. And then he's won the minor piece back. Ah, but he's lost his queen. <laughs> he thought it was being clever. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh dear. And they resigned. Okay, that was a that was a nice one. <laughs> I think we talked through everything on that one. Um, the fourteen hundred definitely just gave the game away. Uh, bad positioning, losing two tempe, um, two key tempe. And the 1300 used basic, simple movements, owning the files with the rooks. And as we discussed, you know, basic, simple attacks towards smaller pieces attacking higher pieces to put pressure on a key square and a key piece to then eventually take off a higher piece and get a capitulation. So that was, um, that was fun to watch. Okay, um, I think that'll be all I'm watching for today again. So this is... Um, the 1300 series mixed in with the 1400 series looking oh there's another one oh i think i'll stick around and watch this one okay so this is the same 1300 against the 1300 nice one so what we're going to see here oh and the the other 1300 has opened with that opening i says that then they need to stay away from Whoever invented that or whoever says that that's a good opening for especially beginner level, um, it needs rethinking because it really doesn't give them anything. It, they might prove me wrong in this thing, but in, it's it doesn't give good counter-attacking, good defense work, good working pieces together type situation. Let's see if it does again, but I, I don't believe it does personally. So they've got the queen check, and it's really nice if he can get castled, and then he gets his rook here behind the queen, and then he'll have constant pressure on this bishop here. If we could get rid of this knight, just get that out of the way, and then the king will struggle to go and get castled, because the only piece that's defending is going to be the queen if he goes and castles. I do like that position. Maybe this 1300 knows about it white basically so it's not there go yet but castling please castle that's the death that's to the, it, even in the last game where they won they were very slow in castling it, you've got to castle as soon as you can um so long as it's safe for you to do so and you're not going into the lion's den um the games that we have watched, the, there was no danger for them actually going castling, but they continued fighting the good fight out in the field, but they hadn't sorted their bed out. So you have to sort your bed out first, sort your house out first, before you then go out into battle. And it's a very key thing, um, especially for these 1300s that we're actually seeing. And... I must say, I am not a master, I am nothing, I just enjoy playing the game and I like to develop my game as I'm going forward. So if I'm sounding like I'm trying to tell 1300s what to do it, um, in a mastery way, I'm not. I'm here to try and help people um, understand that certain behaviours, if they're knocked on the head, would Im help improve their game a little bit, you know. And they're playing chess because they love playing chess, you know, so... Um, why not learn how to play a little bit better, you know, and um, and then get better results as you're going through. So I'm not an instructor or anything like that, but I, for me, I want to improve my chess play. And as I'm doing that, if there's any knowledge that is passed forward, I would love to be sharing that as well. So I don't believe you have to be a grandmaster or a coach or anything to be able to pass on any bits of knowledge that might help anybody. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. It's not me slagging off 1300s, 1400s or any of the ratings. Um, but I am allowed to talk about them. I am allowed to educate myself 
in this process so that I can develop my game in chess. So I just thought I'd mention that. You know, cause sometimes people think, well, who does he think he is? Well, I am who I am. So at this moment in time, they're moving very quickly. Positionally, it's got castled. They're both castled eventually. But they did it after they did a massive war. So I think you can't do that because you're not in a really settled state. I mean, look at this position here at the minute. It's only really got the knight out. So that it's not really a good position. This queen and this knight are not really ideally placed. Rooks aren't ready to get into battle. You know, So sort your bed out first, nice and tidy. And then your team looks and works a lot better together. Or else you don't, don't end up like this and then you're trying to then find your middle game and then transition into your end game um, way too late. So you're way too late to the party. This is what's happening here. Now they're trying to scrabble position for the end game when really the end game opening should start right from the beginning. So he's attacking, single piece attack type thing, but through there he's looking at the bishop. Rook is probably looking to come here to then actually attack this pawn. Queen definitely can't come here because the bishop will just take anyway. So it looks like this pawn is going to be lost unless white can find some magical position. Not even going there because the queen's not hitting there, but he's attacking the bishop. So he's actually attacked the queen like we said, so... There's no point in actually going here, so you might look for some sort of compensation coming here, attacking this pawn, because this pawn has gone. That's what I think anyway. Yeah, so he's attacking this pawn for some compensation. He's there, but this he can't do anything with that because that rook is defending. So the bishop will come attack, thinking it's getting the queen. And then he goes and takes the pawn. This rook is protecting this pawn at the minute. So obviously he'll take here. He's got pressure on the knight. So he's probably looking at some sort of fancy business here. Yeah, so that's up. Rook across attacking the knight. Brings his rook across. Um, he is down a minor piece. I'm just noticing. I'm so, so busy flashing around with these. Oh, nice little bit of a pawn movement going on. It is funny though. Yeah, I know past pawns want to be pushed. That is a, a, a very valid thing. Because the opponent then has to think about how do I protect or... So... this I don't think nothing can stop this. All this dancing with the queen. I don't think it's going to help because... He's got a minor piece against his higher pieces, so one of them's going to fall. So this is a case of being too late to the party in terms of development, especially for whites, the white 1300. Way too late. Also losing the minor piece throughout that battle. And they hadn't actually gone and castled. So they hadn't sorted the bed out, but they went out there fighting and they came back with um, a little bit of damage. So they've not really been able to come back from that. Black ended up in a slightly better situation, although they were still on the back, but they had a passed pawn, which is like gold dust, isn't it? So you really have to sort out castling king safety, Get your pieces working together that again this 1300 the white 1300 has suffered from not working the team together now it's way too late to the party way too late it's, it can't get it back now uh, if it does it's going to suffer even more damage so it's going to lose more material look how far down this pawn is you know if black's going to be doing it right it can just simply push the pawn down He's going to win something. He's going to take one of these major pieces off the board. It's taken a while over this. It's sometimes it's a bit annoying when they do take a long time when they've got an obvious move to make. But hey, it's not my game. If they start like getting arty, 
that's when they're going to lose tempo. What the what was that? What was the need for that rook move? <laughs> As I was just saying, why are they getting at it? It doesn't matter if he takes. The knight isn't doing anything to this situation. So I don't understand why this rook move was made <laughs> at all. In, in no, any no, there's no. I don't have a reason for that rook. Can somebody tell me why this pawn did not get get pushed down here? Make a queen, rook takes, bishop takes. That's it, isn't it? This didn't need to do anything else. <laughs> What's this rook move? <laughs> oh my goodness! And this is the stuff that you see with the thirteen hundreds. You don't see that magic. You don't see those special night moves. You don't see that type of stuff. This is what you see. <laughs> that just makes me laugh. I can't see any rationale at all. Even why you'd think about moving that rook. What? Where? Even if it was a mouse slip, where was it looking to go on this file? Ouch. Just drop this pawn. He's lost, he's lost pieces already. Black has lost pieces when he didn't have to lose pieces. This is really, in, this has been a, such an exciting um, series of the 1300s. Taking a peek into the 1300s playing style. Now he drops it. Did he not realise it? I mean, he was pushing that pawn, so I don't understand why. He took, and it's background checkmate now if he takes. Well, the queen will come and defend, but it's still background checkmate. But he's not even doing that. <laughs> Let's see if we go here. Yeah. And the rook goes there. Then what you got? But damn. But he's not going to do that though, because he's going to lose his queen. So he won't be brave enough to do that. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And, and obviously, maybe a slight movement. Oh, it's not even there, go. Boom, boom, boom. Nope. Does he even bother to move it? Yeah, he could go there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Getting a bit testy. I thought it was going to go for a bit of style, you see. Get the fork of Rooney on there. But that didn't work. So now he does have these if he's wanting to play a little bit and give Black something to think about. Black's let him <laughs> exactly. Black's let him off the hook, so he's not going to take obviously, but he may do. But I, I don't think he is. Um, maybe he should have just moved that there actually, but never mind. Oh dear, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. He's lost his rook, dearie me. Up and then ba boom. Oopsie dee. So I think that is kind of all she wrote and I'm hoping you can see how, in my little world of chess, when I say that I've done research and still doing research, um, this is actual practical, practical research. It's not just, um, you know, listening to somebody else's research and looking in a book and looking at somebody else's research, looking online and looking at somebody else's research. This is me doing my own research to hopefully, well, to try and develop my own game of chess so i'm not playing anybody else's game i'm not doing mr nidolf's game i'm not doing mr sicilian's game i'm not doing any king's indians game i don't know those moves and what i do is i know the chess board and the chess pieces and 
try to get into the psyche of how people play, the methodologies that they use, and just basically try and improve my own performance. And that's the last one. Excellent.